we are live, but I'm going to wait for the uh, the number of attendees to pop up. And of course, I didn't announce this like I just announced the last one. And uh, people will join in. But the, the beauty of this is that it's uh, the video will be up and people will be watching it at three o'clock in the morning when I'm sleeping. So, you know, that's good. So, all right. So we are live. Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome to another live broadcast of me and my friends who are also content creators. And some of you already know Steve, the Dean Williams, and uh, he needs no introduction. So I'm just going to ask him. I'm not going to give any bio or anything like that. I just want people to know you and what you're all about. And just go for it. Tell people who you are who might not know you. Well, first off, I want to say, George, Happy New Year to you. I, I can't, I, I, I want it before I talk about me, I just want to talk about you for a second and let you know how much I, I really appreciate, admire, and love what you do, man. I'm a huge fan of yours. I, I, that's why I gave you the moniker White Chocolate, because you're like a brother in disguise. I really think you're a black man. But anyway, I just want to say, first off, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me on here. But uh, <laughs> a little bit about me, guys. I've been... I've been doing this wait for a minute, wait, wait. years. <laughs> I, 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 been, I thought you were white. Wait a minute. <laughs> right, right. I, I'm white? Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. Wait, we, right. We, we, we truly are uh, brothers from different mothers. We really are, yes. you know? Yes, absolutely. All right. A little a little bit about me, guys. Uh, I'm Steve the Dean Williams. I'm a, a, a dating coach, but not just a dating coach. I teach manhood. I teach uh, everything a man needs in order to thrive in this world. Um, I've been doing this for over 30 years and I've seen the PUAs. I've seen all the things that have happened in this because I was born outside of the the internet and um, what I try to strive in is uh, teach men about their name and make them more accountable of what they do. And I try to stress that the game was never about women. The game was all about manhood. Women were just a perk that came along when a man uh, was on his journey. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I guess one of the things, um, one of the things that sticks out in my mind about you, uh, like every every speaker, every content creator I know, has like like a core message. You know, like uh, with yes. EO, what's EO say? It all, it all. Uh, also, what's he say? It begins with the man, begins, or some. Yeah, begins and ends with yeah. the man. Yeah, and with you, the thing that stands out in my mind when I think of Steve Williams, I automatically think the name, the man's yes. name. And I've never heard anyone talk about you perform well because of your name. You invite people into your life and they take part of, the, of your name. Your name means something, your reputation. Uh, tell us about that name thing. Well, the name, and like I was telling you, we talked about before, the falling into respect and not love. The name itself is the foundation of everything that you are. It's just like you're the company. It's all about you. You have got to decide what you want based off of your name. Because one thing I, I tell people is that you are the only you in this world. And how do we know that based off of your fingerprint? You are the only one of your kind in this world. And as the only right. one of your kind, your standards must be only yours and yours alone based off of how you live your life and how you stand on your name. And I, what I sometimes mean by name is in the streets, we call it standing on your square. <laughs> you know, in the streets, they call it standing on your square. That means that no matter what happens, I'm going to be firm in all my decisions. I'm going to be firm on what I think, what I believe, how I move, how I think. Everything that I do based off of my name, I'm going to own it. I'm going to stand by it. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to fight for it and I'll die for it because I believe in it so much. That's the name, man. Yeah. You know, what an important message. What an important message. You know, like when you talk to your children, yes. you know what I mean? I've, I've, I've heard your conversations <laughs> And you say to them, you, you're a Williams, 
Yes. And that means something. That yes. means something. What does it mean to be a Williams? Well, what it means to be a Williams, and I always tell people, you know, we all got to this country some way through a boat, from a boat. And some came above the boat and some came below the boat. It didn't matter how you got here. You got here. And when we had our name or when our ancestors had our name is that was the thing that they were proud of. You know, they might not had much money. They might not had wealth or or they might be on the street or whatever they had. But they always had their name and they always stood on their name when they had sons. They were proud because they knew their son would be able to be their bloodline and keep the keep their name going from decade from century to century, decade to decade. And that's what the name is all about. And that's why I stress not only to my children, but everybody else, that you must understand your name has to be everything because that's where you get the respect, not only from women, but also from men. Yeah. You know, I remember, I don't know where I saw this picture. You might have. You might have posted it in the private group that we all belong to uh, online, but I remember a picture of you sitting at a table with all your kids and everyone's smiling. And I'm, um, you know how, like when you look at a picture on your phone, you expand it and I expanded yes. it on all your kids' faces. And I just saw this pride, contentment, happiness. Yes. I went over to your face, smiling, pride, contentment, happiness. Yes. And I saw these are Williams right here. Yes, because I, I, I want all my kids to know that I'm not going to be here forever. So it's up to them to carry the name and and carry it with honor, carry it with integrity and carry it with respect and realize that life is always going to throw things at you. Life doesn't care about you. The game doesn't care about you. But what you have to care about is how you carry yourself at the end of the day. And if you can't carry yourself like that, you have to look to you to pick yourself up. You got to look to you in the mirror and tell that person I love you. I support you. I need you. And I'm going to follow you until the day we die. And that's that's what I try to push in my uh, kids. You know, yes, that's e education and all that other stuff. Absolutely. That's part of the core of uh, being a man. But I want my children to realize when I walk, talk, eat or watch TV, I do it as a Williams. I think we got George frozen. Wait a second. Oh, George might be frozen. <laughs> I think we're live. George is frozen, guys. So uh, I will keep talking until George comes back. But uh, also, uh, with, oh, George, you're back now. Okay, you're back. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, excellent. Here, I'm just waiting for you to show back up again on okay. video, oh. but I can still hear your voice. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, we froze up a little bit. Yeah, okay. I'm back. Yeah, I'm, if you can see me, I'm here, though. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, I do okay, appreciate yeah, the message about the name. Yes. I appreciate the message about the name because not a lot of people, I think there's a whole generation of people who are from split families, and it creates kind of a schizophrenic identity you know yes. between the mom and the dad and they don't know who they belong to it's like i'm living with mom but i have my dad's last name or maybe not you know yeah well well and it go and again see men have forgotten respect i i, I don't mind love you know you remember i told you a long time ago fall in respect you remember i i i always want to fall in respect I've, I've said that a million times to fall into respect as a man. And what I mean by that is as a man, we have to set the standard for what we are and what we want. And once we set the standard for what we are and what we want, what happens is that becomes the law, rule and code of how you live your life. And when you set the standard, and you become the standard and you know that, OK, listen, just like a job, you know, the thing about a job is they let the employee know that you will always have one foot out the door. Never feel comfortable. Never feel safe. 
This right. is this is this is what I hired you for. I hired you for this much. I hired you to do this job, and this is what I expect of you. And if you yeah. cannot perform that job, George, what will happen is we'll give you a warning. And if you can't perform the job after that, you can be replaceable. And that's what I try to teach men about respect is I want to make sure that everybody I deal with has one foot out of the door, not because of a threat or anything like that. It's because I demand so much of myself. So I demand so much of the people that are around me. Yeah. You know, it's some people call that dread game and I, I don't like to call it dread, but there is elements of dread there. In other words, the, some performance has to happen. Yes. You got to have, I mean, some, a lot of people talk about unconditional love. Yes. I mean, I love, I love my kids, yes. you know, uh, I might not always be happy with them, but I will always love them no matter yes. what. Yes. Uh, my own parents, uh, I love them no matter what. Sometimes we get in disagreements. I might not be happy with a conversation, but my love never changes. When it comes to anyone else outside that, uh, my relationship with them is conditional. There has to be some working, uh, you know, I'm not a hard taskmaster. It's right, just right. that I'm a faithful friend. I demand faithfulness. Yes. I... I perform, I produce. Yes. If I am in a business relationship with you somehow, some way, I expect the same. It's, it's yes. un unconditional love stops with my family. When it comes to everyone else, there's got to be a certain amount of performance. Talk about that performance that is necessary to keep relationships going in general. Right. Well, for me, I, I, I've always said I only have a handful of people that are I call my circle. I mean, because I like to keep my circle tight it really tight knit because uh, I, I demand too much of people like, because I demand too much of myself. You know, I, I, I go to sleep at three or four in the morning, wake up at seven. I'm full of energy. I, you know, I work hard. I, I, I do all these things. I don't demand people to do the same thing, but I demand this kind of loyalty that if we're discussing things or we're talking about things that if we keep it private between us. Uh, if, if one of you are down, if, if one of you has a problem, I'm there for you. You you do you don't even need to ask, but I I know because we know each other so well. So, uh, but it all comes back to you at the end of the day, and that's what I push to to a lot of men. Before you do all these things, you must know yourself. You have to have laws, rules, codes, principles, narratives, mission statements, legacy statements. All these things you must have for yourself before you can do any of these things. Because if you do, the, if you don't have those things, George, you fall short. And that's what's yeah. happening to a lot of men. They're looking outside of themselves. And unfortunately, there's what I call the Smith. You know, they talk about the matrices and pills and all that other stuff. Yeah. I always say that, listen, there are people out there that know the game. And then there are people that just generalize things. All women are bad or don't date all these people and don't get married and don't do this. Those are the people that are causing more harm to men than those that are telling men, make it about yourself, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Let me change the subject here for a second real quick and then we'll go back. Sure. When we were at the last uh, conference. Yes. You had said something to me about your father, and you had said, uh, you know who my father is, right? And I said, no, I don't know who your father is. I didn't, I mean, I didn't know. I just didn't know. Right, right. Well, this is for the audience, all right? Um, <laughs> Steve's father is probably the most celebrated oh. detective in America right now. I'm trying to think of, of detectives that, that people knew that were like on the news and stuff. I remember Mark Furman, right? Was he Mark, Mark Furman? Mark Furman. Was that yeah. OJ? Was that the yeah, OJ, OJ thing? Yes. yes okay. OJ, yeah. So, but I mean, w when you ask people who are the detectives that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Furman, that's really it. Yeah. And Ted Williams, <laughs> who, who's been on TV Yes. <laughs> the most well-known 
<laughs> detect you know it's so funny <laughs> whenever there's like a, a crazy murder or something going on yes you're you're they his phone must ring off the hook <laughs> and and what's interesting is he's got this superpower thing going on where he's got this this uh He's got this intuition that will ask him a question about the crime, mm -hmm. and he just automatically just synthesizes all this data in a microsecond. <laughs> He's not even quiet. He doesn't think about it. It just this is just from decades of <laughs> yeah. of collection of evidence and tracking yeah. killers down. He spits out the truth of who he thinks did it, why they did it, the way they did it. Everybody, this is uh, so. This is the son of the famous detective Ted Williams. Let me ask you this. Let me ask yes. you this. Yes. How much of your father do you feel that you have in your in your brain, and how has having a famous father uh, affected Steve the Dean Williams? Well, I'll do the second one first. I, I kind I, I, like I, I kind of keep the famous dad. I mean, I talk about him here and there, but you know, he's his own man. You know what I mean? He's doing his thing, and as my own man, I'm doing mine. But yes, uh, I appreciate him for what he is because he brought me in this world. I'm glad he thought about having me. I mean, so. But no, I like you said. Uh, I, I, the, I get it from the father. You know, um, how I think. I, I go like this. There's not a question you can ask. There's not a problem you can give me. There's not a text message that you can't send me that I can't give you the answer right off the bat without even thinking about it. Because I, the way my mind works, or I guess his work, mind works the same, is that I, and that's what I try to teach people, process information stored in your mind and access it when it's the right time. You know, I, I always called it scribe. You know, I, I always tell my clients, you know, I scribe it. Like if I'm driving down the street, and I have a thought, you know, if I'm hanging out with George Bruno, and we see two women and I know George is smoother than I am, you know, and I'm gonna have to make the first move, scribe, you know, that's the thought. So if you and I are at the bar, we see the woman, I act on it. I don't think it's thinking and doing. So that's how my mind works. So, uh, yeah, I think I got it from him because I am, you know, I have his, his DNA in me, but, yeah. uh, but as my own man, I stand on the fact that I am the one of my kind based off of my fingerprint. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, growing up in the shadow yeah. of a, of a well-known detective. I yeah. mean, that's what a, yeah. what a trip that is because literally if I ask a hundred people, who is the most famous detective that, you know, right now, they're, they're yes. going to say Ted Williams. <laughs> and, and I could see where that's genetic. I can yeah. see, I can see after you told me who your dad was, I was like, you know what? That makes sense. You see his arrogance though, is you, you see, you can see his personality. I mean, if, if you ever watch him, my personality comes from that because when I was small, they always said, you're little Ted, you're little Ted. And, yeah. and he, I got that from that side. Then I had the, from his side, you know, when we went to McDonald's, this is how a, a Williams eats a hamburger. This is how Williams moves. This is how Williams thinks. So I got it from both sides. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> that's pretty interesting. You know, what's interesting is like no matter how famous of a parent we have, they're yes. still just a parent to us. Yes. It's still dad. Yes. You know, he's not Ted Williams to you. To right. me, he's he's right. Ted Williams. I look yeah. at him and I go, <laughs> "Wow, that's Ted Williams," and you're just he's dad. your dad. Yes, it's my dad. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Wow. What's the best piece of advice your dad ever gave you? Your name. It goes back. He, he, I'm a Williams. Uh, I will always be a Williams. And everything that we are is how we're going to be seen and perceived in the world. You know, look beyond your skin color. You know, your skin color is what your skin color is and you cannot change it. And, you know, again, they can take everything from you, but they can't take this from you. So as long as you stand on this, you're fine. Because just like, you know, uh, you know, the color, the color of my skin can be a problem in certain things, but I don't make it uh, a problem. I just accept things for what they are versus what I want them to be. And that's what I've always been teaching. And I've always learned that 
what is is what is, and then there's could be. And what I learned from him, but I also try to push to everybody else is they've got to stop looking outside of themselves because we're in a time right now, George, where everybody's, you know, get your weight, okay, work out, get your clothes, get your shoes, get your degree, get go on your this this so-called uh, purpose thing or whatever they come up with to to be able to be successful with not just women but in life and i don't it's not about that it's about the man it's about me yeah let's go to the skin color thing for a second you know sure. someone i was having a conversation with one of the guys on the speaking team and you know he made some comment about you know we have a pretty diverse team of speakers, you know, uh, and I, and when I hear diverse, I instantly think ra racial. It's, you know, that's, that's code yeah. word for racial. But then again, I had to think like we do because I actually had to bring up the picture, the group picture of all of us. And I had to say, Oh yeah, we do because I don't look at that group picture of all the speakers, and and I'll I think I'll I'll post this picture a little bit later. I don't look at that picture and go, okay, let, let me count the black guys, and I'm like <laughs> one, two, you know. But when I when I do that, I'm like, oh yeah, because I don't think like oh yeah, we have like there are some black guys. I don't think that way. I just think I have friends. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think, I don't think in terms of this is my black friend, Steve, <laughs> right. my black friend, Jesse. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't even, my brain cells don't even yeah. Yeah. go to race. Right. Uh, if I need something from you, I don't think, let me talk to my black friend, Steve. <laughs> it just doesn't, right. doesn't occur to me. Yes. yes. Does, it's not until someone said to me, oh, yeah, we're a very diverse team. I'm like, we are. It just. Yeah. But some, yeah. some people live, they rise and fall on skin color. Tell me what that's all about. Well, to me, see, when someone see for me, you're right. I, I, I don't I don't look at I, I, I for the, my mind way. My mind is I don't look at color. I just look at the person. I look at the, yeah. the man. I. You know, when you said it, I don't even think diversity. And when you said it, the reason I laugh because I didn't even think. It's like, oh, wow, well, yeah, I, guess, I guess you're right. I, I don't yeah. even think about those things because I don't look at you as a white man. I mean, I always call you white chocolate because I feel like you got brother in yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 but see, that's learning from your personality. See, yes. what a lot of people don't understand about what they call the game, and I hate to use the word the game, but the street. Mm -hmm. You know, you have book smarts, you have street smarts. The yes. street smarts is where everything is because you can take street smarts and bring that over to corporate America dating and women. See, when I met you, the reason why I felt like we connected is because you and, and guys, this is my George Bruno kissing a, kissing a moment because he's the man moment. But I'm saying when I met him, guys, it, it, you don't understand how game recognized game. And that's something that, the, the, the you know, the blacks, you know, I'm just, I'm just joking, yep. that they, yep. they stay on the street because, see, even like even with Elvis Presley, everybody thought he was really the king of rock and roll, but really people don't know that he went across the railroad tracks to the other side to learn yes. about those things. See, people don't really do that kind of history, but it's not a racial thing. It's just that right. a lot of people go on the streets to learn from – the the other side again you're to me you're on the other side and and it's the beautiful thing the the other side doesn't mean just black men they are italian white asian they're they're a, a genre of men on the other side of the street that know street game you know what i mean and that's where you and i connected because when we first started talking and hearing you on the radio in in the voice i mean guys i'm telling you this <laughs> I, I know he's asking me, but I, I always bring it back to him because he is, without a shadow of a doubt, in the game as far as the street. And the information you learn from George is street game. It's not made up stuff like I got to come up with an idea. I got to come up with a word or a phrase. Right. Every time I talk to George, I can tell he's from the street. So 
uh, when it comes when it when it comes to color, unfortunately, a lot of people look at my color and say, or some of them get threatened because they're like, well, uh, I, I I can't really explain it like he explains it. You know, I've got to come up with a generic, systematic way of trying to explain one thing. But here's he, you know, he's just flowing. Like you said, you know, back in the day, it was called jive talk. See, people don't even right. know about jive talking. Right. Jive talking started from the streets. And right. jive talking rolled into rap music. And then what happened was there was a white woman named Blondie that went to the streets. And then she sung a song on MTV. And everybody thought she invented rap. But see, that's the right. thing about color of right. skin. Uh, people don't know, and it's not my color skin because you have this. You have a different color skin, but you have a different mindset. It's the mindset. It's not the skin color. It's the mindset that's on the other side. So it it, uh, it just made yeah. me laugh what you were saying though. It was, <laughs> it was yeah. Right. Well, we met at I think it was uh, the first. Was it the first Patriarch event? Yes, yes, yes. And then uh, it wasn't long after that you and i were both in europe in poland yes in poland yes wow <laughs> what let, let's reminisce a little bit about yes uh the poland trip what did you think of going to poland what were your thoughts about that i'm the only black man there i'm like the black man. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the whole country i think <laughs> I'm, I'm walking down the street like should i get some grape soda or chicken am i gonna <laughs> I think I was to uh, yes. give me a stereotype. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, do I? Okay, let me back off the chicken a little bit. Yeah, but no, yeah. Was, I'm just playing. But no, it was a great experience because it, it, the experience was the the 21 going yeah. outside. Just just being, a, I was a, I was a thorn. I was I was a beacon because out of yeah. all the the whites that were walking around, I was the only black guy walking around. Yeah. Everything. So yeah. It, it was a weird experience, but it was fine. I mean, they were nice people. They treated me well. Except the one Indian guy walked up and just said, hey, what's up, brother? <laughs> I don't know. Like, what's up? I, I'm like, hi. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, that is funny. That is funny. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll never forget. I was work, I was cutting hair uh, many, many years ago in a black barber shop. And um, one guy walked in, and he walked up to my business partner at the time uh, a black fella and uh gave him about this is back in the day when people would give about like 10 different handshakes you yeah. know what i'm talking about that yeah. Yeah. yeah okay and then it, and he would do that to the other guy then he'd walk over to me and go hi george <laughs> and i thought where's my other nine handshakes what's going <laughs> And I'm like, come on, I'm feeling like ripped <laughs> off here. You know? Well, George, I'm going to give you nine handshakes when I see you next time. I'll give you nine <laughs> and I'm going to give you a hug, dog. I'm going to give you oh, nine that's great. Hug. That's great. <laughs> hey, guys, real quick, I'm, I, I'm telling you, George, it, I swear George is black on the inside. I, I'm sorry, guys. George, <laughs> George is so smooth. I, guys, y'all don't know how smooth he is. He's smoother than the other side of the pillow. That's why I sing the song because he is. Y'all, y'all see George. George is, you know, George is nice. He's welcoming and all these things. You get George around a woman, and George is smooth. Ooh, it's like a smooth, like liquor flowing yeah. down your throat, smooth. So I love yeah. it, man. And you dap women nine different ways. See that, George? Yeah. See that? You see, you can dap a woman a million different ways. Because you know you. <laughs> That's great. You know, it's it's funny. Um, uh, what what does Jesse Lee say? He says something about <laughs> you know. But doesn't he doesn't he say like uniting the races? Uh, he's got a line that he talks about uniting the races, and um, you know he he's an interesting fellow, and yeah. and he he really. Um, uh, He's he's a guy that doesn't have he doesn't check he's like yourself he doesn't check what other people think before he speaks you know what I mean he's not he's he doesn't want it he doesn't get everybody's approval before he voices his opinion yes and uh, what what are your thoughts about Jesse Lee Peterson was that the first time you met him 
I, that's the first time I met him. I've been on the show a few times, but I, yeah. the reason, see, Jesse is hated but loved, and on the it, Je, what I love about Jesse is Jesse is Jesse, and that's why I try to teach men. I don't, I'm not here to, man, I don't want you to be, I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to, I'm just going to tell you what I think. And either you're going to accept it or you're not. And the hate that he gets for what he is, you know, he's called a sellout. He's called um, an Uncle Tom. But guys, if you do your homework on Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom helped the slaves do your homework on that. So don't use, don't use Uncle Tom. Use uh, uh, Sambo. Sambo was the one that turned in Tom. So don't call him a Tom, call him a Sambo. But anyway, mm -hmm. but Jesse, it, Jesse gets all the heat because people can't handle honesty. Jesse yeah. is, yeah, he, that's the beautiful thing about being a man. You don't, you don't think about, well, okay, well, I'm going to say this, but wait, before I say it, am I going to hurt her feelings? Is his feelings going to be hurt? No, you say what's on your mind because as a man, if you think it and you're going to do it, you might as well think it and say it and just keep on moving forward, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. All right. So now that we're on the uh, topic of black guys, just for the heck of it here, yes. um, You've shared the stage with um, Elliot Hulse. Yes. Uh, he's, uh, I think he's 40, uh, a father, father yes. figure. Uh, yes. I guess he's, uh, would he be more of a fitness industry figure? Do you think he's more of a fitness industry guy? Or, or wh what would you say his thing is? How do you describe it? He, I, I see him as fitness and motivation. I see him as okay. fitness and motivation because uh, when I when I started watching him, I know that I think he started off as fitness. I'm not sure, but what I seen, I see him working out and all that other stuff. But then he's 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 motivating people to get up and start doing something. So, uh, I but but regardless of fitness or motivation, I see him as a man. <laughs> That's at the end of the day. I just yeah. see him as a man, and as a man. Whatever he is, I respect it because it's coming from a place of manhood. And that's yeah. what he pushes the most. And that's why I, I connect with so many people like you and people like that, because they're coming from man. They're not coming from I got to please you and I worry about what you think. This is who I am. Accept me for what I do. And we good. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. You know, it's funny. You and I, we mix. We each have our own audiences. <laughs> yes, yes. And we mi and we mix with people who have their own audiences. It's almost yes. like when we when we do these conferences, it's like a uh, it's a conference of kings. Yes. Who all who all have their own kingdoms. Yes. Uh, my audience is not a uh, a game audience. It's not a red pill audience. Right. It's uh, it's it truly is a very mixed audience. How would you describe your audience? My audience is an audience of guys that are starting to realize that they are, they learn, they're trying to learn how to be single-minded. So uh, I have a mixed audience. Uh, it's all races, but what I yeah. try to keep people off of is race. I don't, I'm not here to push race talk about race. I don't talk about political stuff. I don't talk about religion. I say you, whatever you are, I respect. I, I don't, you know, to me, I don't care what you are. It's just what I'm trying to get you to see is that you are the only one of your kind. And, and I go back to the name. I try to push the, the oneness, the name. And I also try to show them things that most people don't teach. See, see people, it seemed like when they come to YouTube or something, they, they, they look for, they always try to reinvent the wheel. They're always trying to look for ways to change up the game. And the game is always going to remain the same. You can't yeah. change the wheel. But what I try to do is I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to get you to reinvent yourself. If you learn you, you, I don't want you to be me. I'm not a cult. And that's hey, the huge oh. Oh, That's sorry. powerful. Don't reinvent the wheel. Reinvent yourself. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because the wow. wheel is fine the way it is. It's wow. just that you don't believe in yourself enough to say that I'm good enough to do what I want to do. And that's where I try to push them. I, I'm the only one. That, I've always told guys that you were born a winner. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's so cliche. I'm saying, no, well, think about it. When your mom, your dad met up and you were going towards the egg, did you need Facebook? Did you need YouTube? 
Did you need female nature? Did you need to build your purpose? Did you need hypergamy? Did you need all these goofy words and phrases? And they're like, no. I said, did you ever take a break? Did you ever say, you know what? I'm going to sit around and wait till tomorrow to do this. No, you have something inside of you that's there. I'm trying to get you to find it. I don't want you to be me because I'm the only me out there. Like you're the only you. So what I try to tell guys is you got to find you. And without all the jargon and all the BS that's out there, you got to be able to de de sort all that out. And that's the problem right now. They can't sort it out. They think what they see as uh, jargon or theory, I always call it theory, theory mm -hmm. versus game. When they hear theory, when someone generalizes all women, all women are this and all women are that, that's not true because you haven't dated every woman. You haven't been married to every woman and you haven't seen every woman to make the statement. So and it, well, here's the thing, George, the game is not even about women. So how do you make it about women and say you got game? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. In the past year, you joined forces, I believe, on Monday nights with a gentleman in Chicago. Yes. Uh, Mr. Everett Overton. <laughs> yes. Yes. And and you created some kind of collaboration together where you guys come together and you do a yes. show and whatever. Tell me about that. Tell me about that relationship that you have with him and tell me about the men that you serve. Tell me about how, um, how you guys fit together. How, how, will, how is it um, collaborating with someone so far away who has his own kingdom Yes. And yet and yet you come together. Tell me about that whole scenario. It's just like this. It's just like you and I, George. It's, it's just men coming together. You know, we are independent thinkers. But when we get at the table, we just pass on information to each other. It's trusted information because it's coming from a source of manhood and it's not coming from a source of theory. So what I always love to do is collaborate with men who have, quote unquote, been on the streets, you know, and I got to keep bringing it back to the street. Uh, when you have been on the street or the other side of the tracks and you know the game versus what the Internet wants people to uh, learn, that's what that's the connection when you have experienced it. Now, again, I'm not going to put George's business out there, but I mean, come on. You can take a blue a blue line and look at all the, the war wounds he's had on women. I mean, George is bad. Yeah, I can tell see, y'all don't know George used to be on radio. I don't know if George you told him this, but George used to be on the radio, which told me right there George had game. Because George would be like, Hey, what's going on, everybody? You were listening to this down to George <laughs> Bruno. So all the ladies out there, pull your panties down and give it. I mean, that's the that's the kind of you yeah, see, George is laughing because he knows what I'm talking about. George is cold, but we yeah. connect. But that's I it's the same with EO. Men connect with men. Men can see right through BS, just like women. We I, we have this this thing that we can tell real from fake. And I know you have that. I know. You can tell real from fake. You've got that inside of you. And that's what I see in EO. I do that with Rosebud on Tuesdays. I, I, I love connecting with men because I want people to see how men interact with each other when they're around each other versus, oh, boo-hoo, it's not fair. Life is not fair. Oh, I, I can't be around that kind of stuff. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, now, did you get together with Donovan at all? Yes. Yeah. Donovan and I, uh, we used to do, remember Donovan and I used to do a show. So That's right. A, a Friday night show. That's Friday right. Night That's show. right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I got with Donovan. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we've collaborated on a few things. Absolutely, man. Okay, good. That worked out well. Um, now, you said you are you do something with somebody on a, a Tuesday night? Yeah. Rosebud Bitterdose. He's a pimp. An ex-pimp. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, okay. In the streets. Yeah. Rosebud Bitterdose was on American Pimp. It's a movie uh, that was in, I think it came out in the 90s or early 2000s. It's called American Pimp, but yeah. he's a pimp, but he's retired now, but he teaches street knowledge to use into today's world. It's, th it's just like you and I, George, except you and I didn't have a bunch of women on the street uh, yeah. bringing us money. But he, again, authentically man. I mean, I mean, he doesn't use catchphrases and words and 
all this other stuff. And he forces people that listen to him to take out those words and phrases. He tries like me and, and you and, and EO and all these other men, stop trying to mimic somebody because you didn't come in this world saying female nature. You didn't come in this world saying pills, plates, uh, hypergamy and all this stuff. You didn't come in there. Somebody taught you that they taught you how to speak like them. And that's the problem. That means yeah. you're trying to be the that person versus being yourself. And men like him and EO, we force you. If you say the word escalate, which is like a PUA term back in eight, the early 2000s from the, the game, the book, we try to say, no, don't don't say those words here. I want you to speak like a man. Do not mimic another man. Be your own man. How did you end up, let's talk about those two collaborations, the Monday night collaboration with yes. EO. And for people who don't know, EO, is his name is uh, Everett Overton. Everett he lives Overton. In, yes. Yeah, he lives in Chicago. And uh, I don't know how I, I stumbled upon him. Uh, he was watching my channel for a while. Uh, and then I brought him on. And then I uh, had urged... Um, Anthony Johnson, I said, you know what, he, he might be a good speaker, it might be good to introduce him as a, a new face, and uh, I just made the suggestion, and it turned out to be a good choice. Um, how did you end up collabing with EO, and how did you end up collabing with uh, your Tuesday night guy? Rosebud, yes. Okay, well, Everett, uh, again, it, it's, it's just like you and I. When we meet, it's just like we've known each other forever. I mean, that's how men are. When we, 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 we don't know anything. As soon as we say hi, it's like, oh, pfft, he's just like me. He, he, I, can, I see man. And that's what I saw in uh, Coach mm -hmm. EO Everett. I saw man. I saw someone that's genuinely honest, someone that's going to keep it 100, and just like Jesse, that's not going to care what you think. I'm going to yeah. tell you what it is, and I don't care what you think. And if you want to follow success, because he is successful, you're successful, Rosebud successful. If you want to follow success, you got to listen to the message and stop listening to the messenger. And that's what they push the most, both of those guys. And that's what I love about them the most, man. Yeah. Do you see any other collaborations in the future with anyone else? Oh, yeah. And I, on Tuesday, Mr. Lucario, Hashim Lucario. Yeah, that's another guy, Mr. Lucario. Who yes. is that? Tell, tell me about uh, yeah. Lucario. Mr. Lucario has been doing this for decades as well as I see. See, the thing is, there's a lot of black guys that have been doing this. For, I don't want to break up race again. I'm just That's saying right. there, are, there are a lot of colors. I'm just playing. But no, uh, Mr. Lucario, <laughs> no, Mr. Lucario has yeah. been doing this the same thing for a long time. It's just that people don't really want to hear the truth. They want to hear the it's OK. It's not your fault. It's her fault. Let's blame this person. Let's blame that person. And then when you get with real people, again, real people from the street, they're going to tell you what it is. It's about accountability. I, and I always, and, and the thing about, I love about Lucario, he's like EO, like yourself, like Rosebud. They are individuals that put it on the man. They say it can't, there's nothing a woman can do to you that you haven't allowed her to do. And, mm. what, and what these men do is that they do the one thing that the regular, uh, these theory-based gentlemen don't do. See, the theory-based gentleman looks at the last domino. Okay, she took my money. She went to government. You know, the, she dogged me out. But what real men do is they go to the first domino and they ask the man, what did you do to allow her to treat you that way? And that's what we do. We hold men accountable for every action because that's what men do. And that's why I love Lucario, EO, Rosebud, and you because y'all keep it 1,000. That's a street term, guys, if y'all know. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of us guys in the men's community, we, uh, we get a lot of uh, emails and messages from men all over the world. It's not yes. just the United, not just an American thing. We get messages from men all over the world. What is a typical message from a man that you might get? And what is it about? Well, I, okay, I get, I get them all. Okay, I, I get it. See, one thing I do to try to separate myself, 
I help you with text messages. If there's anything dealing with a woman, I got it. It's, it's already there. So they will send me text messages or they'll do it live on the air. They'll say, Steve, all right, I've got this woman. Here's my problem. And live on the air or on the thing, I'll tell them what to do, send it, and I'll, and I'll help you out. I will help you and guide you. There's a text message thing. Uh, there's uh, the guys that are asking about some of the, the methods that I teach, like the wine above your bed. How do I utilize the wine above my bed to move a woman to get more interest in me? And what kind of wines? And how do I fix my shower or my easel? How do I set my crib up? How do I cook meals? What type of desserts do I make? How do I learn poetry? I teach poetry. I, I teach everything, George. How do I do that? They ask questions about their relationships. How do I meet? How do I approach? How do I stand on my square? Uh, what happens when a woman is disrespecting me? I get all these things, but I always make sure I bring it back to the man. It, it's, it's a beautiful thing. But yes, they ask me just about everything because I, I try to show them as a man, I'm all things. I mean, I'm not everything, but I know all, a lot of things. I'm not the smartest crayon in the crayon box, but because of my street knowledge and me being an ex-gigolo, I know, I know a few things. What does the year 2021 have in store for you? What are, your, what are your thoughts about the upcoming year? What plans do you have? What will you do differently now than you did last year? Um, first thing I've been, I've been stressing for a lot of men, a uh, few things. Number one, I've been trying to tell them that you're a year back now, because if you've had problems in 2019 because of the COVID, it's pushed you back a year because you haven't got a chance to get out, really talk to women. So what I'm pushing to these guys, number one is you've got to stop following theory and listen to a natural game. Theory is not going to get you anywhere. Theory is just going to set you up for a downfall. So that's something I'm pushing. I'm also pushing to these guys, stop worrying about the other man. Stop worrying about the next man. Stop worrying about what other men do. Worry about yourself. The bear doesn't think about the lion. The lion doesn't think about the shark. And the shark doesn't think about the wolf, nor the wolf, the eagle. They don't think about themselves. They're all predators. They stay in their lane and they just focus on themselves. So it's that. It's uh, it's uh, doing more live shows that I always do. It's doing more uh, regular shows now where I'm giving them more depth of, of the thought of a man on a one on one basis. But I'm trying to do everything I can to show these guys how to think individually instead of a collective. So those are the things that I'm pushing in 2021, my brother. I have seen you do uh, broadcasts from your office, <laughs> studio, from your car. I've seen yes. you do things from your vehicle. Yes. Uh, what is your fit? I've seen you do. I have seen you do broadcasts from a hotel room. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I re if I'm not mistaken, I think we were in Poland and you were doing live yes. broadcasts from Warsaw, Poland. Yes. Yes. It's the love and the passion of the game that I have. I, you know, the thing about me, I always tell guys, don't believe me. Just, just see it for yourself. And, yeah. and uh, just, hey, kick the tires. I always tell them, you know, as soon as you go on my website, you'll see my receipts. I, 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 I always love showing receipts and showing you what your life could be versus a lot of guys who, who don't have any kind of receipts. They just coming up. It's just like the PUAs. They're just coming up with jargon. But I want to show guys that the thing about the game is that it goes on forever. And yeah. George, just like you, I've seen you in your car. I've seen you, you out in the cold and stuff. I see you chilling. You, it, it doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm always pushing manhood and being one minded, single minded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did a, uh, a show earlier today with a, a lady who's in uh, North Carolina Yes. And it was on, um, uh, basically I had her answer the question, what is a good wife? And she's a stay at home, uh, mom, uh, married 25 years and she's very active in her home and making things for her family and making dinner for her husband. Uh, like a, a traditional wife type of thing. What is your, uh, talk to me about what a traditional wife what is a good woman what is a good wife what's the steve williams definition of a of a good wife 
Okay, the first thing before I even go to what's the definition of a good wife, I need to know what the definition of a good man is because I can't okay. get a good wife if I'm not a good man. No, I, you're right. No, I just want to ask. I want people to understand that because like a lot that. of people would just say, well, good wife should be this, 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 and this. No, no, no. I need to know what I am because I got to be the leader in the rock. So what I, what I, what a good wife to me is, is like I've always broken down relationships. And that's something a lot of people don't do. The meeting and dating phase, there's the relationship phase, there's the moving in phase, there's the engagement phase, and then there's the marriage phase. So every phase that I have are a set of rules, laws, and codes that I expect, not only of myself, but of the mate that I'm with, that they have to hit at least 70%, or we can't go forward. I just, we can't go forward. And if I, if you do it that way, you can weed out those that are not worthy of your name or your sperm. See, and, and so the, the things that I look at, like, let me give you an example. I'll give you one example. The living together phase. I, I, people always get shocked at this, but you got to follow me on this. The living together phase, before she moves in, I believe you should get a joint bank account. And the reason why I say joint bank account is because let's say the bills equal $1,000. I'm going to put $1,500 in a joint that account. You put $500 in that account. Your money is your money. My money is my money. Everything that goes in that bank account is going to be for entertainment purposes and bills. That's it. I'm not going to ask you for any money. Don't ask me for any money because at that point, I'm trying to see how you manage your money. Don't ask me for gas or anything like that because that's telling me that, you know what, I need to check credit scores. I mean, I, I get real deep in it, but just living together, there are certain standards that I have of somebody just to live with me. And if you cannot hit those things, remember, George, I'm not forcing you to do it, just like the company. This is, the, this is what I am. These are the terms. And you are allowed to say no. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm not here to force you to say no. I understand if you don't want to do it. And that's fine. Guess what, George? We just fall back. We don't need Dr. Phil or marriage counseling to know that we're just not compatible. But see, I force the woman to be more than just a body. I force her to be character. I force her to show, show me what you bring to the table other than your body. Show me what you can do because I'm not looking for a wife. I'm looking for someone that's going to give birth me a son <laughs> that is going to push our name down the line. And if you cannot do certain things that I expect, and hey, give me your expectations. It's not just one way, George, but I'm just saying for me, that's why I've ever, I've, in the 21 years that I've been married, I, I've only had, my, my wife has only been upset at me five times. And the only times that she's been upset at me is because she wants me to sleep. When I get tired, she wants me to come to bed. But George, you know me, I'm always up to two, three, four in the morning working. So five times in 21 years, I, I slept in my, uh, my, my office. That was on me. But I don't have arguments and I don't have fights. I, I, I try to show people by living it. I just don't tell you about it. I'm living it. And yeah. If you can see that and see that, and again, if you don't want to be married, don't be married. I'm not pushing marriage. I'm not pushing you to have kids. I'm pushing you to make the decisions you want to make. But before you make your decisions, you have to know what your expectations are. Meeting and dating, relationship, living together, engagement, and marriage. And that's basically her going up the mountain towards your name, not going stagnant, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> let me ask, let me ask you about uh, marriage. Sure. Is there is there such a thing as his money, her money, and our money? Like, tell me, or is it all? You know, some people say, well, all the money that's brought into this marriage belongs to husband and wife. Some people say, well, there's the pot where both contribute into the paying the bills and such, and then. You know, and then she can have her money if she uh, does stuff. He can have his money if he does <laughs> stuff. What is your view on on money and marriage? I believe that when you are married, when she when she takes your name, it is one. You're one. It, see, mm -hmm. the problem with a lot of people is they're not one. They're they're half of one. They're you know, like you said, we're together, but you know, I'm hiding money from you. We're together, but you know, I got to ask to you know, can I get this? When you get married, again, when you take on the name, 
that's part of it. But George, it's the important thing. That's part of the discussion that you have to have before you even put the ring on her finger. Because yeah. I'm not going to marry somebody that tells me that it's my money and I get to do what I want with it. Yeah, you get to do with it while you out, was out my door. I'll see you later. But if you were with me, every, all the money goes into one pot. And yeah. then from that pot, not only do we take care of bills, but when we go out on our date every week or how we spend time together, we sit down and we talk about the books. You know, as a king, you have to have your hand in everything. Just because you're not running everything, you still got to know what's going on in your kingdom. So it, yeah. she's, you know, she's she's a, she's better at the books than I am. She's an accountant, you know, does all that stuff. So I can uh, I, I can sit down with her and she can tell me what she's spending money on and what she's doing and how she's moving the money. And I'm fine with that. That's but see, that's part of the unity of a marriage. But if she's a girlfriend, George, if you're living with her, if you're just messing around with her, I don't even care about what you do with your money because you're not I'm not giving you any money. I, I'm not. Don't ask. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Right. Right. So if you want to spend money, let's just say uh, you're out and about and you want to spend money. You just want to go to lunch somewhere. You don't have to check with your wife first. right? You <laughs> just you, you just go. Right. Because it's the, the money's there. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 I couldn't even imagine. You know what? If I checked with her, she would always, always make jokes with her. I said, you know, if I, if I say do certain things, just kill me on the spot because it's not me. So if I ever called her up and I said, uh, is it okay if I, she'd probably kill me because I don't, I don't check. I'm, right. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> again, it's called a man mindset. It's not me being disrespectful because guess what? She doesn't have to check with me to spend money. She right. just does it. I'm fine with it. It's this is how it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Check. <laughs> that is, it is. I I know I know men that do that, and it's just I scratch my head, and I'm thinking, wow, wow, what kind of marriage is that? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. What uh, what kind of things do you guys do as a family? Oh, everything. Yeah, you name it. Everything we. We used to, we're the weird, we're the, we were the weird family in all the neighborhoods because when the kids were born, we would walk the kids uh, in a stroller to the park uh, in the elementary school and play with the kids. Uh, you know, all the kids thought we were weird. Um, you know, okay, George, remember that when we were young, there was always that house that you want to hang out in, that the hangout house, you know, yeah. that old thing. Like, as you can see, we, we, this is, this is, you know, this is, the kids are not here anymore, but uh, that's the thing that we decided on doing. We want to watch our kids, you know, especially today. So we created the hangout house where kids can come and hang out. We have Halloween parties, Christmas parties, birthday parties, and all that here for kids and stuff like that. But uh, the things that we do as a family, we do everything as a family. I mean, it's just uh, it, it, right now, unfortunately, the you know, all my my sons and my my my, my son and my daughters, they're they're in colleges in other uh, states now, but, you know, they, they're down now, you know, to spend uh, Christmas and New Year's with us. And then they're going about their growing up lives. So, you know, it, it'll, it'll change. And that's something people need to know. It, it'll change as kids grow. They they you, you got to you got to kind of push them off to create their own little world, you know, but let yeah. them know I'm still there for you. I'm a little shadow in your world and you can always come back to me, but I need you to be self-sufficient on your own. So I always push independence uh, with uh, my kids. But we but when they were small, I, oh, man, we do everything. Unbirth birthday gift. Matter of fact, we had what was called. This is why they loved uh, my, my old lady so much, because she had a thing called unbirthday gift. So if you were over my house and, uh, you know, it was somebody's birthday. She didn't want you to feel left out, so she would give you like fifty dollars in a card, and that was to my friends. I'm like, man, what you my money back? And then see, George, I can't save you know the money. They say, what, what are you doing? Like, like that's what she. Well, no, I just want them to be a part of things. I don't want to. You know, just how she thinks. But yeah, she. But the thing about her, that's where I was still got. She was all about the. She wasn't about the clubs, the hanging out. She was about the PTA meetings, school. Uh, discipline, you know, and um, having a seven year plan. I mean, it was it was a two year, five year, 10 year and 15 year plan in the beginning. So, you know, wow. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like a very organized woman. Because I'm an organized man. 
<laughs> I don't. I don't think you would accept any less. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> Tell me about um, a weekly. Do you go on weekly dates or <laughs> monthly dates? Or t- tell me about why that's important. What someone can do uh, if they want to start that in their marriage and their relationship. You know what, George? That started. It's even though I wasn't married in my early twenties, it started in my early twenties when I was a gigolo. Because I, I, when I was seeing married women, I was learning why they were cheating on their men because their men wasn't taking care of business. And I always said, yeah, and I always said to myself that if I get married, I, I, I know how to, I know how to keep her satisfied. And I teach guys sex as well, but I know it's not just sex, but it's also see men, men don't understand intimacy with women or sexuality. A lot of men choose not to learn that stuff, and that's something I also teach men, but. I realize I know how to keep the fire stoked, have her wanting for more and make it every day seem like it's still the first day we met. So, yeah, matter right. of fact, tonight we're going out on a date. We're going out. We go. We do it every week. I, I, I make it because I'm so busy. I make it my business to do at least we got to go at least one week. And if we go to that doesn't count us going to the movies as a family and all other stuff. I'm talking about me and her time. So I, I do it at least once a week. I've been doing it once a week for uh, 21 years, except when I was like in Poland, you know, if I'm out of town or something. But yeah. other than that, yeah, yeah. What does a Mr. and Mrs. Williams date look like? Uh, it, it looks like uh, just going out and having a good time. I'm a good time. I, I, we laugh and we just joke and, and we just we laugh, joke, talk. And it's just it. I don't know. It's, it's always been like that with women. Well, you know what I'm talking about with your white chocolate. You know, when you get around women, it's just like, you know, wait, what's a, what's a date with you, white chocolate? It's the same thing. You know, you're with a woman and she loses time. She enjoys your company. She'll rub your face, tell you how great you are. You know what I mean? It's just like what we do, white chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, you live in Texas. Tell me yes. about tech. How is Texas? What part of, I mean, Texas you know, a lot of people don't realize how big the state is. Yes. It's it's massive. Yes. And that different parts of Texas have different weather patterns. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, tell me about like the area that you live, what it's like. Um, it's, what, what is it like weather wise, socially? Just tell me about Texas. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not really a social person outside because I kind of st- say to myself, but it, where I'm at, it's it's beautiful. Um, where, where it's a little cold now, but we can wear shorts almost all year round, just about uh, most of the year, all shorts, even in, sometimes in December. So it's very nice. But what I love the most, see, when I when I see, I'm from Maryland and D.C. I lived, in, I went to Germany, and when I was in the army, I was in Germany. Then when I left Germany, I came straight to Texas because of the cost of living. You can get more house for the buck down here versus up north. Like, wow. a, a, yeah, a regular house up north is what, $450,000, $500,000, yep. and that's like a two or three bedroom. Yep. $450,000 or $500,000, you can get a house built from the ground up. <laughs> Four, five, six bedrooms. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm in this, I, we built this house right here, seven bedrooms built from the ground up around it costs about 550 600,000 back uh, a few years ago but it would i mean i'm just saying you could get more house you get more acre more land so you I, you have yeah. seven bedrooms in that house yes yeah seven bedroom house yes that's a big house yeah yeah it's a big house yeah it's uh i think it's 5500 feet almost 6000 square feet or something like that yeah so it's, yeah it's it's pretty but yeah but it's but you get more bang for the buck, you know, yeah. and, you know, but, you know, we got to whittle down now because, you know, we're moving into the next phase of the plan because all the sure. kids aren't here. So <laughs> we just live. We got empty rooms all over. So but uh, you I, that's why I would tell anybody, man, you come down. I mean, you can look it up right now. People, I would I would tell anybody, look up homes in Texas, type it up. You can get a hundred fifty thousand dollar house, brand new Three, four, five bedrooms. I mean, the economy is great down here. It is killing mm. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've always heard Texas is a great place to live. There's yes. not a lot of people leaving Texas, but there's a lot of people now coming into Texas. Yes, absolutely. Yes. 
around the Houston area. I mean, Houston is I'm around Houston. So it's it's pockets of of cities around Houston. And it's just it's it's money everywhere. It's it's a great living. It's great. Oh, that's great. That's great. All right. So now we're in 2021. Yes. We've talked about everything. What does 2021 have in store for you? What's on what's on your plan of action for 2021? Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully to absolutely see you in the 21 when that comes up again, when that drops. Um, yep. But basically just doing everything I can to show guys that it's not as bad as you think it is. We just have to stop listening to theory and we've got to stop. We've got to stop waking up and start realizing that everybody that's on the YouTube is not really your friend. They're not really there to help you. A lot of people don't understand the, how marketing 101 works. And it's a thing where, unfortunately, a lot of a lot of people trust men. They look at men and they trust the wrong kind of men that give the wrong kind of information. And it's, yeah. and, 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 it's, and if you're complaining and because, George, you don't complain, you're, you're not a complainer. And that's that's what I love about you. You're so right. solution based. And that's why we connect so much. I'm just trying to push young men to look at more solution based men versus theory based men that want to scare you straight. Don't they, They'll tell you not to get married. They'll tell you to stay away from women. They even tell these guys not to jerk off. That's a new thing. There's this thing going around. They're telling guys what to do with their their, their own packages. And yeah. and a lot of young men need to be careful about that because a lot of men are very impressionable right now and they don't understand these women are just going to eat them up in the real world. And yeah, I just got to make them realize their name, their value and their worth in 2021, man. I love it. Uh, two last questions and then we'll get to where people can find you. How does a man find a wife, not just a girlfriend? How does a man find a wife? Okay, the first way, the first thing he's got to know is who he is. He's got to know what he's going to stand for and what he wants. It's, it's just like the it's like the job. You've got to be that. You've got to be that building. You the name on the building is your building, and you have got to set a tone and a standard for you that not only of what of what you are as far as uh, what you are. Yes, I yes I do to counsel. Yes, but yes, to answer that question right there. But not uh, what you do as far as who you are. Okay. And I teach guys, before we go into the woman, we've got to understand the man. We've got to understand you, how you operate, how you think. We've got to learn sexuality because a lot of young men don't do learn sexuality. They think that sexuality is, is soft or something like that. And they've got to understand that in order to really find that wife, You've got to make the emotional connection. It's not, they don't think like us. It's not the physical. So I try to get them set up, not only the, the learning themselves, women, dating, and sex. You've got to know all these things about yourself. That's number one, George. I mean, it's so much about you. It is so much about you, number one. Then when you meet the woman and y'all come together, it's not about the sex. I know they love sex, and I'm not saying don't have sex. Make it about the character. What is it about her that makes me feel like she's worthy enough of my time? <laughs> because my time is everything to me, and I'm not going to waste it on somebody that's playing games, trying to be manipulative, trying to be disrespectful, or anything. I don't. I don't do disrespect at all. I will not. I will. George, some guys have high tolerance. Some guys have low tolerance. George. Before you find a wife, you got to have no tolerance. That means, George, that you must be willing to sacrifice that beautiful woman. You might love her body. You might love her breasts and her lips and all that other stuff. But you got to love yourself that much more because if she is disrespecting your name, she's got to go. But those are things that you got to go. But if looking for a woman, it's phases. What are my expectations of you while we're dating? He has to know that for himself. What are my expectations of the woman while we're in a relationship? He's got to learn that. That's why I teach them to learn that. What are my expectations of us living together? What are my ex and then when it gets to, to the marriage part, oh, we got to really have a sit down. Religion, politics, discipline, holidays, schooling. 
We got to, we, we're not talking about the wedding cake and the, the, the you know, the, the horse trotting on the carriage and you get to come out with, no. We're talking about what is the plan? College, if we're in an apartment, where are we going to be five years from now? The five-year plan, money. I need to see your credit scores because you got to have clean credit because if I got over uh, 800 or 700 uh, credit score, high credit score, you're not going to bring me down. We got to fix these things. I mean, and, and a lot of men have never been taught this, George. They've just been taught you meet her, you fall in love, you get married, you have problems, you go to a marriage counselor, you get divorced, then you're screwed. No. I demand so much of the woman because I demand so much of my name and myself. So that's what some of the things I teach guys are what I look for in a wife. A key word wife because I'm looking for someone to bear me sons and daughters that I can pass my name to. So it's got to be the most excruciating Q&A and conversation that we have because I'm not giving my sperm away for free. Now I'll give it away yeah. for free. Yeah, I mean, but I'm not have no babies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So now here's the other question. Uh, I do have a uh, a large amount of females that follow me, and a yes. lot of the females are the type. I have some widows yes. uh, who lo lost their husbands who may or may not be interested in getting married again. I have married women who are moms. Uh, women who are wives with no children. And I have uh, single women who've never been married or they might be divorced. Yes. How does, a, how does a woman find a husband? By listening to a man. <laughs> it's this simple. The only way you're going to find a husband is to see what a man is. And men are very rare, far few in between. And a man, the difference between a man, I call them males, grass eating lions and things like that, is a man stands on his name. And the only way you're going to find a man is to understand men. See, a lot of women don't understand men, nor do they take the time to learn men. You know what? Some men like playing video games. I'm one of those. I'm a big, I'm a big kid. Some men like to watch wrestling, basketball, football. Uh, some men like biking. Some men, men, men like different things. You've got to know what you want and you've got to find that in a man who likes the same things that you like, but never try to change that man into what you want him to be. Just like I believe a man should never try to change a woman to what he wants to be. What you are is what you are. And what women have to understand is that, unfortunately, because of this thought type society that's going on, because I'm not going to blame women and I'm not going to tear women down like most people do. You're fine the way you are. You just have to find someone that is going to accept you for who you are. I'm not telling don't ever change for a man because I'm going to tell my guys never to change for you. So don't change for a man. Would you? It's just like, remember, was it 1939, George, before the Internet thing called The Wizard of Oz, guys? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great movie, but it had some great educational things. See, at the end, Dorothy saw this massive, powerful wizard, right? Thunder, lightning and voice, right? But when she pulled that curtain back, it was a little scrawny man behind some buttons. So what I'm saying to you ladies is that the way you carry yourself is the way that you're going to be seen. I didn't make the rules up, but you have to understand this, ladies. And I'm going to say this with love. At the end of the day, you're going after his last name and you're going after his ring. So you must show him why out of all the other women that you stand out. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. I'm not telling you don't do it. I'm not here to say do it or don't do it. I'm just telling you what is. As a man, I, I like a woman that knows herself, that's confident in herself, but also she knows that her place is not behind me, not in front of me, but beside me. And when you can get like that, you'll have a better chance at getting a man. But again, you've got to know what a man is first. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. And I think uh, that kind of advice is missing from all over <laughs> yes. the web. Yes. You, you just you just don't hear anyone uh, talking like this, you know? No, because everybody can't do that. Yeah. You did speak at uh, the 21 convention. Did you speak at the 22 convention? Yes, I did speak at 22. Yeah, I, I did. Yes. Which, yeah. which was to women. To women. Yes. Yeah. What What did you talk to women about? 
I, I told them all, I said, ladies, I, I told you, I told the ladies what I was. I told the ladies I learned the game. I started at nine years old. I started learning about women at nine. First experience with a woman was 13. She was 24. Uh, I've gone through women like a hot knife through butter. I, I, I am honest in what I am. But <laughs> with that being said, I am a great husband, father, lover, and friend. And, uh, and I, have, I have what you want. Even though you can judge me, and that's why I said it, because I'm showing them, don't judge me for who I am. See me for what I do, because you want what I have. Every woman, you want the 21-year marriage. You want to come through that door where you cannot, well, okay, excuse me. You want where you walk, you can't walk through the door, take your clothes off, take a shower or bath without me jumping in or touching you or kissing you or touching. You want that. So if you want those things, then you need to follow someone that can get you towards those things instead of somebody telling you that you're not good enough and, you know, stay away from this and stay away from that. I am success. I don't toot my own horn or anything like that, but I have what you want. You just got to understand what a man is because a man isn't what you see on Lifetime TV. <laughs> that's right. not a man. That's just right. something that's created to make you feel good about yourself. Yeah. That's great stuff, man. We got to do this again. We have <laughs> Wait, to do this again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How can, well, we already have one guy that wants to consult with you. Yes. So, uh, you know, he'll probably be reaching out to you after yes. this uh, show. How can people reach you? How can people find out more? Tell yeah. us. Okay. First, first off, for, okay, before I say that, again, I just got to make it about my white chocolate. White chocolate, man. I, I, you're my dog, man. You, you, hey, guys, hey, guys, I, I, this is, you know, out of out of all the like every every Christmas, I only send things to people I care about. I, I, I don't have there's not many. There's not many. But I, I reached out to George in November and he had no idea. I just asked for his address. He was kind enough to give it to me. I know it was kind of a weird question, but it's just when as a man, when, when I appreciate somebody and, and really just admire what they do. I just love to show my appreciation. That I just want to say that, Joy. I I, I appreciate you. I mean, you're you're, you're, my, dog. you're, you're my man. Uh, yeah. But, uh, thank you. <laughs> how to find me? Get your crayons out, gentlemen. How to find me? Go to youtube.com forward slash Steve Williams. I've been on this thing so long. I got my own name, uh, George. YouTube.com forward slash Steve Williams on my YouTube. Also, if you have any questions, go to the man mindset at gmail.com. Send me an email, send me your number. And unlike other people, I'll call you myself. You'll get the call from me. I'll call you. And when you're ready to learn, let me know. Next thing I would say to you guys, right below you, you see my dot com, the man mindset uh, dot com. I want to tell you this. Do not believe me at all. I will be the only one telling you, don't believe me. See it for yourself. When you go to the man mindset dot com. On the first page, I always post the receipts. I always post what it's going to be like when you are a authentic man. It's not me. It's from my clients. So, And then when you go into the website, I've got cooking shows for you to show you how to cook meals. I show you how to write poetry. We got a lot of free stuff in there. And I have my own dating chat line, guys, as well. Who has that? I have my own dating chat line where women are on there right now. So I try to give guys as much as I can of me to show them that it's not about me. I, this is not a cult. I, I can promise you this, guys. I'm not here to make you another one of me because I'm the only one of me. And I don't want you to be me and I don't want to be you. I'm just trying to show you how to find yourself. That's it. Thank you, George. I appreciate it, man. Wow. <laughs> a, a conversation. And, you know, it's so funny because we, 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 do, we do these conversations Yes. Like usually in a studio, you know, with bright lights and cameras yes. everywhere, and we're both dressed up and whatever. Yes. And here I am. I'm sitting here in my truck in in, just, in, yeah, just... in, my, in my driveway. So I I feel so. Uh, we're we're just so used to being in a studio, but yes. I I like the informal nature of yes. this, yes. and um, I think. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew, but I think we should do this again within another month. I'd like George, to, you know. You, you send the George signal. 
guys yep. that got send just send the, the signal of a white chocolate bar in the sky. <laughs> just, just send me the just send me the white chocolate signal, brother, and I'm there. You don't have to ask me twice. You hey, George, whenever it doesn't matter when, where, why, how you need me, I am there for you anytime, brother. And I know you are, and and likewise as well. Well, Steve Williams, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it, and. Uh, we're going to be catching up real soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and thank all those that are listening. And guys, listen, like, if not this one, but like George, support George, subscribe to George. He is, I'm sorry, i got to make it about you, George. I know we about me, but guys, show this man some love because there's nothing but love, compassion, and caring that he gives you, man. I'm sorry, George. I know you want to end. I just, I just, I, I just, I was going to That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you, Steve. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, George. Thank you. Take care. All right.